research break on KXLM, your leading source of research news in the Twin Cities. With Emily Wilson, Jenna Wasneski, Trudy Saxelby, and Willow Rogers. And I'm Jenna Wasneski, and thank you for joining us on today's edition of Research Break. In breaking news tonight, researchers worldwide are recruiting people with relapsing forms of multiple sclerosis for a study assessing the safety and effectiveness of teraflunamide, a new investigational oral treatment for the disease. Teraflunamide, also known as Areva, has already been approved in many other countries for the treatment of another autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis. Approximately 1,100 people will participate in the study in 200 research centers worldwide, including the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis. That's right. Anyone interested in learning more about this study and eligibility requirements is encouraged to visit www.nationalmssociety.org. And now, we turn to Jenna for a more in-depth look at the sometimes complicated process of clinical trials. Thanks, Emily. You're right. Clinical trials can be a complicated process. And for people living with multiple sclerosis, which is an incurable chronic disease, this process can be pretty intimidating. But clinical trials are essential to developing new treatments, and there's a lot of information out there to get people started and help ease their minds. I had the opportunity to catch up with Dr. Roberta McDonald, who is an expert in clinical trials. Let's take a look. Hello, and I am joined today with Dr. Roberta McDonald, who is an expert in clinical trials. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. All right, so tell us a little bit, what is a clinical trial? That's a good question. You know, a clinical trial is a research study to determine the safety and effectiveness of a new drug. Okay. And you know, it's a, it can be a complicated process, but um, can yield a lot of great successes. Definitely. So what does make it such a complicated process? Well, there are many factors involved in making sure that a trial is conducted properly and that the results are valid. Okay. Uh, the FDA requires that each um, drug go through three phases of clinical trials before it's ever approved on the market. Three phases. So tell me, what, what are these phases? Well, phase one is determining safety. So this is essentially where the researchers are um, seeing how the body reacts to the therapy. If it's proven safe, then um, researchers move forward with phase two, which studies the effectiveness of the drug. Okay, so how long does this phase last? This depends. It could last several months and even several years. It oh, depends right. on the number of people. Sure. This is also uh, the phase of testing known as the controlled phase. So okay. this means that one segment of the group will get the new drug that's being tested, while another will get a placebo or a standard therapy. Okay, so this is really where the experiment takes place, where there's this new potential therapy, and then they're testing it against either no therapy or just the regular old standard exactly. therapy. Exactly. This is a critical part okay. of clinical trials to just, oh. just determine whether or not it's effective. Okay. Excellent. Yes. So, so if the drug is effective, sure. then we move on to phase three, uh, which involves even more people than phase two. And we look also at the drug's effectiveness and side effects. So mm -hmm. these are multi-center studies that can last several years and can go on in several different countries. So a lot of the studies that we're hearing about the trials happening that are happening, you know, at all these different research centers worldwide, these are phase three studies? That's correct. Okay, great. Excellent. And I know that there are so many exciting potential therapies that are in trials right now. Um, in fact, I know a trial was just announced within this past week. Can you tell me a little bit more about that one? Yes, this, this most recent trial is for people who, uh, with MS who experience neuropathic pain, which is pain caused by nerve damage in the disease. Okay, so if I understand neuropathic pain correctly, that's kind of the shooting, stabbing pain, or the prickly pins and needles that's sort of right. pain. That's right, that's right. And okay. this drug that's being tested to treat that kind of pain is actually, uh, it belongs to a group of medications typically used to treat depression. So it's not yet approved yet for MS or MS-related pain, but we will see. Excellent. Well, you know, I feel like I've heard a lot of studies lately that are looking at drugs that treat other conditions like blood pressure and diabetes and depression. Okay and how they can help people with MS. So we'll be staying on top of this. Exciting. It is exciting. Thank you so much, Dr. McDonald, for being here today. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jenna, for that interesting perspective on clinical trials. Thanks. It really is an interesting and important topic. In fact, the MS Society is going to be holding four research symposiums this year to help people statewide understand research a little bit more in depth, and particularly clinical trials. So stay tuned for those. Wow, what a great opportunity. Definitely. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been another edition of Research, research Break. Break.